Hello everyone, I'm here with Katie Karras from my office and we're going to talk to you a little bit about this amazing Abby's Werner case that we've all seen in the Indiana news lately. And if you're not aware what happened, Abby's Werner was a first grade teacher who was shot by one of her uh, students, a six year old. And she's actually a teacher out in Newport News, Virginia. Now, earlier this week, Abby and her attorneys filed a lawsuit against the Newport News School District, including the school that she worked at, which was Richneck Elementary, uh, the school principal, the assistant principal, and some of the other school uh, administrators, including the superintendent. In that lawsuit, she alleged that not only did the school know previously that this kid had violent propensities, that this child was a violent child, but they knew that he had brought the, the gun to the school that day. And they were told and on at least three different occasions that it occurred, but they did nothing to stop it and nothing to prevent it. In the lawsuit itself, which is 20 pages long, you'll see that they allege gross negligence, negligence, recklessness, and breach of duty. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to Katie a little bit about this case, especially as it pertains to cases like this in Indiana. So, um, Katie, tell me a little bit about uh, in Indiana, if there is a case against a school like this case, mm -hmm. uh, what would be the first thing that you would do as an attorney? Well, the first thing I would do is once we have a client, we would send out a tort claim notice, and that's required for all government entities, including for public schools. And we would also send out what's called a CAPSA notice, which is Claims Against Public School Act notice, giving the school an opportunity to remedy it. And in our situation, since we deal with people who are injured, we give them a, a remedy of a financial settlement amount. And so let's talk a little bit more about that tort claims notice that you mentioned. That, what is the, the, the process, like how do you do that? How do you get that notice to the school? So what we do is the Tort Claims Act requires that any claims against a government entity such as a public school, it has to be a written notice within 180 days of the incident. And so we send by certified mail a form that lists specific information so that the school and other government entities within that same area, including um, our Attorney General and the Department of Education and the local county administrators and the mayor of the, of the county and the governor of the state of Indiana, we send this form to them notifying them of the date of the incident, the injury, what happened, and also um, the location and everyone who is involved so that they have an opportunity to identify what has happened. And you said that that notice has to be sent 180 days, uh, uh, within 180 days of the incident. Correct. What happens if you send it on day 181 or 182? So if an injured person or a plaintiff in this case does not comply with the Tort Claims Act and it's filed late, once you try to go to court and get money against the school or the insurance company for the school, the court could dismiss it because you essentially did violate the statute and the deadline. So we have seen it before. We at our office at Herschel Montes, we do not have any issue with um, not violating deadlines, but sometimes clients try to deal with claims on their own and they don't know about that rule and so they don't send the notice and they contact us more than six months after the incident and we have seen courts dismiss claims for violation of the uh, Tort Claims Act. So I guess what you're saying to our viewers is if they have a potential claim against a school or governmental entity, they better get that tort notice out within 180 days. Absolutely. It's better to um, get on it sooner rather than later and if you feel like you might have a case and you feel like you might want to consult with an attorney it's better to call consult with an attorney sooner rather than later so you can know what your rights are and what the options are uh, i want to ask you a little bit more about the abby's warner case in that case uh, the, the school is alleging that this really should be a workers' compensation case as opposed to what we would call a third-party case. And can you just tell our viewers a little bit about why they would do that? So with these types of cases, the reason that the school or in essence their insurance company who would be paying for the damages wants it to be a workers' compensation case is that it is um, limits their liability and it limits how much they're going to have to pay. In Indiana, for example, workers' compensation is limited to your 
pay direct payment of your medical bills, um, a payment of your lost wages only up to a certain amount per week, and a very limited payment for permanency of your injuries. There really isn't any allocation or money given for pain and suffering or emotional distress or long-term damages. It's, it's a much more limited um, recovery. And so I guess um, what you're saying is that, that the school wants it to be a workers' compensation case, at least their insurance company does, because they'll pay less money? They'll end up paying way less money. In this case, Abby has filed a lawsuit for $40 million because she was severely injured and she has had a significant effect on her life. And that is a reasonable amount to be asking for in this type of case. But in a workers' compensation case, you wouldn't get anything near that amount. So the whole reason that the school and their insurance company want this to be a workers' compensation case is to significantly limit how much they have to pay. Interesting. So uh, we, we talked a little bit about how in the Abby's Werner case, uh, there is an allegation that the school had notice. Mm -hmm. Is that similar? That's in Virginia, of course. Is that similar to Indiana law? Do you have to show some kind of notice of, of the hazard on the defendant? You sure do. So in that case, Abigail is saying that the school knew that the student had a propensity or uh, issues potentially with violence and that they knew that he had been uh, carrying a gun on him to school. And in Indiana, you have to show that the school or the premises um, knew or should have known that there was a hazard on a hazardous condition or hazardous issue or problem on their on their premises. And in a school situation, when we're dealing with bullying, as a parent or as a student, or in this case, as a teacher, you have to give notice to the school that there is a problem. If you're dealing with a bully or students are having problems or if a teacher is having a problem with another student, you have to report it. You have to notify the administration that there's a problem with certain students um, so that the school can do something to fix it. So if the school doesn't know there's a problem, um, how they're going to defend the case and say that they had no idea. Um, if you have a, a general, what we call general negligence claim that's not a, a, a bullying claim, let's say you have a, um, a dangerous issue on the premises like hot playground equipment or something that's not functional or you've got um, uh, slips, someone slips and falls on something, you have to let the school know or let, let's say you're at the grocery store. They need to have a time to be able to correct it. So notice in Indiana is, is really important. If you can't prove that the um, defendant, in this case like a school or let's say a grocery store, knew that there was a hazard on the premises or at least should have known by um, let's say for high playground equipment, they should have known that if someone goes out, a child goes out and plays on the playground equipment when it's 90 degrees outside, they're gonna burn themselves, then the school can defend and say, well, there was no way for them to fix it. I wanna ask you a little bit more about the, the Tort Claims Act here in Indiana and maybe some of the limitations that the Tort Claims Act has. Is there a limit on the amount of damages that you can seek under the Tort Claims Act? Absolutely. In the state of Indiana, if someone makes a claim against a public or government entity like a public school, any one person cannot uh, recover any more than $700,000 against that government entity for their injuries, no matter how injured they are. We have seen cases where people have damages in the millions and they're affected permanently for the rest of their lives, but the most amount that the government ever is ordered to pay is, is 700000 and a lot of times they don't want to voluntarily pay that uh, because they know that they're, they're capped at it. Now, if you have multiple people injured in one incident, let's say you have a school bus driver hits a car full of uh, people um, and all those people are injured, now each person can get up to 700000 but just like we saw in the uh, State Fair stage collapse in 2011, if you have hundreds of people or even thousands of people that are injured the maximum amount and the government will ever pay for one uh, incident like that is three million dollars no matter how many people well let's hope that's not the case for abby zwarner and uh, another question in indiana 
Uh, we talked about some of the limitations uh, from the Tort Claims Act. Are there any other limitations maybe when it comes to proving fault or liability? Absolutely. In Indiana, if you are injured in a public uh, residence or public location like a grocery store or if you're involved in a car accident, the fault allocation is a, an injured person can uh, recover money if their negligence is 50% or less, meaning if they're the same at fault as a defendant or less. Unfortunately, if you make a claim against a government entity like a public school, if you have any fault at all, even 1%, um, you're, you are not going to be able to recover. The case can be dismissed. Wow, so you could have a million dollar case against a school, but if you're 1% at fault, you get nothing? You get nothing. It's in a really an unfortunate part of our law that gives additional protections to government entities such as schools. They get the special notice within six months, not the regular two-year statute that we have against other potential defendants. Uh, they have limits on how much and money they have to pay out, 700000 and also if the uh, injured person has any fault at all, even 1%, they can um, not be able to recover. Wow. Well, it sounds like it's really tough to make a case against a governmental entity here in the state of Indiana. So let's hope that Abby doesn't have to deal with the same thing out there in Virginia. Thanks for watching.